It is said, very beautiful. The eight forms of Lakshmi Mata. The eight forms of Malakshmi Mata is also considered a mother goddess. When it comes to providing wealth, in its 16 forms, the forms are knowledge, intelligence, strength, courage, beauty, victory, fame, ambition, morality, gold and other wealth, food, grains, bliss, happiness, health, long levity, and virtuous children, virtuous children. The first form of Lakshmi is Adi Lakshmi. And Adi means that Maha Lakshmi or that Great Lakshmi. And Lakshmi means that light. Adi Lakshmi is the consort of Vishnu Bhagavan. In one hand, she holds a white flower, and that white flower represents purity. Purity devotees, not just seeing the white flower, but purity in thoughts, to think good things. Purity in words. Whatever you are saying to someone, whatever you are saying to each other, it must be of upliftment to uplift each other. Words are not wind. Words have vibration. Words can elevate you and yet words can degrade you. Words can make you happy and words can make you sad. And this is what the white lotus flower that Adi Lakshmi holds in her hands represents the purity or the pureness of thoughts, words, and also actions. That is her first form, Adi Lakshmi, Maha Lakshmi. The second form is Dhan Lakshmi. If you want money, or when you want money, you pray to Lakshmi Mata in the form of Dhan Lakshmi. It is also said gold is of good wealth. So you pray to that Lakshmi Mata of Dhan Lakshmi. But sometimes we only look at the outside of the wealth of Dhan Lakshmi. But there is a wealth that is internally that we don't see. And that wealth is the inner strength of a person. Within you are your strength. Your strength is within you. And that also is wealth. The willpower within you is also wealth. Because if you do not have the willpower and you do not have the strength, you become depressed. You become sad. You become worried. You don't know where to turn. You don't know who to turn to. You don't know who to speak with. Problem starts coming and it starts adding and it starts multiplying. And who you go to? You go to Lakshmi Mata in the form of Dhan Lakshmi. And she is going to give you that strength. She is also going to give you talent. Talent is wealth. It's not each and everybody could sing. Remember this, eh? Some people try to sing, which is fantastic and great. But it's not everybody have that Saraswati, the tip of their tongue, to sing so beautiful. Talent not only come in singing, talent come in many ways. She gives you that. Virtues and character. And this is something, devotees, we must learn to understand. To have a good character, it takes a lot. 
In the world that we are living today, devotees of God, meeting people and speaking with people and interacting with people, sometimes you say things that you are sorry. Sometimes you do things that you are sorry again. But what it says here, we must be very careful because what happens, it can tarnish our character. And when you tarnish your character, devotees, Character is something money cannot buy. You cannot go out into the store and purchase it. You cannot have, get it online. You cannot ask someone for it. You have to work for it. You have to earn it. And that comes from within you. And do not let any and anybody take that away from you. Sometimes obstacles come in your way. And you are so challenged to say things and do things. But always remember, your character is at stake. Your name is at stake. For each one of us will die one day, but our name lives on. And our name lives on for who? Our name lives on for our children our grandchildren, our seven generations to come. Our name lives on for the village that we live in. Our name lives on the country that we live in. So always remember your character is all that you have. Your wealth will go. All the material things will go. But your character stands with you. And it also goes with you. So it is said, devotees, the character of the human world. And praying to Dhan Lakshmi, it says, by her divine grace, praying to her only when she blesses you with divine grace, then you can receive that. The third form is Dhanya Lakshmi. Dhanya means food. There's a very beautiful uh, verse that says, let the food be thy medicine and let the medicine be thy food. Pray to Dhanya Lakshmi. It is said, the gardeners, those who are in the agriculture field, they must pray to her for good crops for crops that are very healthy. And through those fruits, roots, and shoots, and the different vegetables, and all the different types of agriculture crops that they grow, this is what they will take to the market, and they will sell for us, for you and I, to purchase, to cook. It is said that these foods, devotees, they have nutrients and minerals for our body. Every vegetable is important to our body. Every fruit is important to our body. Every herb out there, every leaf out there is important to this body. Again, let thy food be thy medicine and let thy medicine be thy food. Please do not overeat. It comes like if you overtake medication or tablet or whatever, you can destroy this body. Same thing, if you overeat food, you can destroy this human system, the human body. So pray to Dhanya Lakshmi for having a healthy body. The crops of all, it is important, the nourishment for the human being. If you don't eat food for about three, four days, what happens? Yes, you can live on water, you know, but you have to be very careful. We need food. So you pray to Dhanya Lakshmi. The fourth Lakshmi. Her name is Gaja Lakshmi. Gaja means the elephant. How strong is that elephant? 
So you pray to that Gaja Lakshmi for that strength. Have you ever seen a weak elephant? And you know another thing about an elephant? If you do a research to see what the elephant eats, the elephant is a pure vegetarian. Pure, pure vegetarian. And yet the elephant is the strongest animal in the forest. In the world. It is said, devotees, that Gaja Lakshmi, who was born out of the churning of the ocean, she was born out of the ocean when it was being churned. She also helped Lord Indra to regain his lost wealth from the depth of the ocean. So in that form, she had the strength as an elephant. So to devotees, we as devotees of God, whether you're Hindu, Muslim, or Christian, we as the human being, we need to have strength. We need to be strong. And not only strong for ourselves, but strong for our children. We need to be strong. If we are not strong, we can fall. The Garud Puran very, very clearly states, you know, the Garud Puran states, devotees, that when this soul or this life leaves the body, the body falls unsupported like a tree without roots. No strength, of t no strength at all. So to devotees, you pray to Gaja Lakshmi for the strength of this body. So after eating the food of dhanya, praying for the food to nourish the body, for nutrients and all of this, we must have strength. Gaja Lakshmi. Sometimes you may hear people say, I now eat and I'm tired. When you now eat, you're supposed to be more strong. You're not supposed to be tired. Not so? You're supposed to be strong. But something is happening that they now eat and they're tired. Some people sleep whole night and they wake up hungry. Some people sleep whole night and they wake up tired. So sometimes you wonder what is really taking place. Are they taking care of the body? Or are they just eating and drinking and having a good time? This is the fourth form of Lakshmi Mata. Let us hear the fifth form. Santana Lakshmi. This is the form of Lakshmi Mata that you are going to pray to, to have beautiful children, your offspring. So you are going to pray to her to have beautiful children. And when Santana Lakshmi speaks about beautiful children, is it just beautiful outside? The beautiful face and the beautiful hair and the body beautiful and all of this. The beauty is inside. You have children, honest, respectable, good conduct. So you pray to Santana Lakshmi to have these children and also to have a good family. So that when you both parents have children, they grow up in a beautiful way. And to have a good family life also. Life is about conversation and not confrontation. Most of the time devotees and families, they do not have conversations. They do not understand each other. Sometimes instead of understanding, they start to have a confrontation. They start to have a quarrel. They start to have an argument. And you know what is taking place there? It means the two thoughts are not balancing. When two minds or two thoughts are not balancing, then confrontations come about. 
But it is said that Santana Lakshmi, she is the one that you pray to. To have a good family life and to have good children. Also having a family that is healthy. Long life and good qualities. I did mention before devotees that your name lives on. When you have beautiful children and you have good children, you remember this beautiful song? Oh, my son, when I die, through you let my name live on. Let my name be as high as the stars and the moon. Wherever you go, my son, wherever you go, my children, let my name reign. And this is Santana Lakshmi. You pray to her for good, beautiful children with good qualities so that your name lives on. The sixth Lakshmi. Veera Lakshmi. This is the sixth form of Lakshmi Mata. And Veera means courage. Veera means courage. So when you want to have courage, devotees, you pray to Veera Lakshmi. You worship her for courage and power. Sometimes devotees, we cannot go anymore. Things are happening so fast in our life. We did not get through the first one, then the second one come, and then the third one come, and all of these are coming on us. What we must have? Courage. When you go back into the Rama and Katha, when King Dasra died, they sent for Satragan and Bharat. Guru sent for them. And when they came back to the city of Ayodhya, the first thing the Guru said to them, the very first thing, and it is in the Ramayana Katha, have courage. Have courage. If you don't sum up that courage within you, again, you become depressed. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. So Veera Lakshmi, you worship her, and she's going to give you that courage and that power to overcome problems and difficulties in your lives. Tell me one person who don't have problems. Tell me one person who do not have difficulties. Because in today's world, everything is a problem. If you have to cook, is a problem. If you have to sweep the house, is a problem. Imagine if you have to wake up, is a problem. But you know, it's something that I, I always say. There is never a problem until you make it a problem. I will repeat that. There is never a problem until you make it a problem. But Veera Lakshmi, you pray to her and she is going to give you the courage. And that courage to overcome problems and difficulties, devotees, internally and externally. What is the courage she is going to give you internally? Whatever sickness we have inside. Whatever ailment we have internally inside of us, devotees. 
she is going to give you that courage to go on and on and on. Because sometimes devotees, people may see you very beautiful and they will see you very handsome. But now they see you smiling away. And if you ask them what is happening, they say you really don't know, you know. You wouldn't even want to know. Hmm? Internally devotees, we are battling a war. But again, who will you go to? Where will you go? You have to be careful who you're telling your problems because they're going to put it out there. As I often said, they will share it like parasad. So here it is, devotees. Veda Lakshmi, she's saying, pray to me and I will give you that courage. Internally, externally. And ensure a life of stability. Seventh Lakshmi. Vidya Lakshmi. You worship her. You pray to her. And she is going to give you knowledge. She is going to give you edu education. And when Vidya Lakshmi speaks about knowledge and education, we have to understand not only academic knowledge. There is something that called common sense. If you look at a little baby, by the time the baby starts to cry and laugh and smile and all these things, did that little baby went to school? No. So where the baby got that knowledge from? Where that baby got that from? The baby knows. The baby knows. When the baby is hungry, the baby is going to cry. Cry. Because the baby knows very quickly, mother or father is going to come. So Vidya Lakshmi is going to give us the knowledge of knowing. Knowing right from wrong. God gave us all the tools that we need. What are the tools? He gives us an intellect. We are the only creature, the human being has an intellect to discriminate right from wrong. All other animals, all other creatures work with an instinct. But the human being has a, sorry, the human being has an intellect to discriminate right from wrong. And sometimes devotees, if not most of the time, probably they don't use it. Probably they work with instinct. There are some people, there are some persons, whatever you tell them to do, they will do. They are like a, a, a branch on a tree, and how the breeze blow, they will go. And if the breeze blow like this, they will go. And if the breeze is not blowing, they one way. But you have to use your intellect. You have to use what you have, that intelligence. That when someone tells you something, you're supposed to analyze it. Think about it. Is it right or is it wrong? This is what Vidya Lakshmi is about. You pray to her and she's going to give you that knowledge. I said before, not only academic knowledge. Academic knowledge is great and fantastic. It is good for employment it is good for work wise but you need deeper than that what about knowledge in your home what about knowledge of your families what about knowledge of upkeeping your house it is always said the greatest university is the universe the greatest university is the universe. Take some time to look out at the trees. Take them some time and sit by the seaside and look out at the ocean. And you would be amazed.
to see how many things that you will feel and how many things that you will see and how many things that you will understand. Take some time to look at the mountains. All of this is knowledge. All of this is understanding life. And this is what Vidya Lakshmi is saying. Pray to her and she is going to give you all the wrong knowledge and education. The eighth Lakshmi. Vijay Lakshmi means victory. Who wants to lose? No one. Who wants to be defeated? No one. You pray to Vijay Lakshmi means victory. She symbolizes victory in all aspects of life. In whatever you are doing, in your major struggles of life, every day someone is struggling. Whether it's a little battle or whether it's a major battle, it doesn't matter. But most of all devotees, the battles in our life are within us. We are our own problem within us. Where the battle is. Kama krodha madha loba tumhara jagatinayara Jabba jabba javana janamaliya Tabba tabba paya banava Tabba tabba paya banava Kama Krodha, Loba, Maya, all that is inside of us devotees. All of that. And we are battling that day in and day out. Sometimes you go to sleep with that battle and you wake up with that battle. And you're fighting now. How am I going to overcome that battle? Here it is said, devotees, Vijay Lakshmi. And how are you going to worship these Lachmis? You light a deer and you pray to her in the form of that light. You do meditation to her in the form of that light. And you pray with love and devotion, faith and belief. You must pray with love and devotion faith and belief. If nothing is happening, is not Lachmi Mata. It is not the prayer. It is you. Probably you're not doing it or not saying it with enough love in it. You're not saying it with enough faith in it. Say it like you mean it. Put love into it. And surely devotees, you will get your rewards. So this is the eighth names of Lakshmi Mata on Diwali day. I am sure that your guru will tell you to light the eight deers on your altar, on your puja place. And the eight deer represents each one of these that you can pray to. Diwali is a very, very beautiful time. 